Okay, so that was the mega mini lecture. And now let's do three more that are actual mini lectures. So the topic for this one actually is what do flowers and newborns have in common? The mitochondria of each is actually generating heat rather than generating ATP. And the reason for that, and but they do it in two different ways. So the first question is, if you've ever seen a plant pushing up through the snow, not much snow around here right now, but sometimes you will see the crocus pushing its way up through the snow. If you look at that, the snow's melted. The flower has generated heat somehow, and yet flowers are not warm-blooded. How did it do that? The answer is it did a special gene to arrange its mitochondria in sort of a way that we might think is inefficient, but it produces heat. And the flowers that produced heat survived and were able to bloom and pass on their genes. The special thing that happens is that the flowers actually produce an alternative NADH dehydrogenase, and then uh, basically they have an alternative oxidase. They have an alternative complex one, alternative complex four. The complex one they have is just much smaller because the, neither of these pumps across any protons. All they do is they take electrons from NADH, they pass them to Q, and then the Q goes over to the complex four alternative one, and it will pass its electrons to oxygen. So the overall reaction is similar to complex one and complex four normally, but they aren't getting any protons pumped across. There actually can be an external NADPH dehydrogenase that can also produce Q in this way. But again, that one's not pumping any protons across either. When that happens, all these electrons are going way down in more stable energy, but the energy is not being used for anything. When that happens, it's like your laptop's plugged in and it's doing some calculations or whatever, but it's not doing anything with those calculations. You know, that produces a lot of heat. This is like that kind of thing happening, except it's happening deliberately. The flower does this when it needs to have heat to survive, to sort of melt the snow that's above it so it can reach the sun and start doing photosynthesis. The energy is gained. The delta E is constant. If it has nowhere to go, so all that energy goes off as random motion. Random motion is heat. So that has several advantages. Melting snow is one. And I want to ask the biologist, what other advantages could a flower have to heating up? There's dispersing odorants. This picture was a hint because the picture is skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage both pushes up through snow and it makes its odorants go farther so that more animals can smell it. And believe it or not, those actually help some animals like the smell of skunk cabbage. And they attract the animals to the, by the, the odorants are warmer, and so they go out farther. The insects are drawn to the rot, the heat of rot and dung. And so this is like a decoy heat. And we're all familiar with how bees are attracted to flowers. Well, this is a way that the flower actually uses infrared radiation, which is what heat is, to attract the bees. Now, um, newborns actually do this too through a similar kind of short circuit. It's not quite as complicated. It's actually similar, um, but it's just one protein that's different. What they do is they express a different kind of complex five, a different kind of ATP synthase that doesn't make ATP. It's basically just a pore in the membrane that lets protons through. It's called the uncoupling protein. And if you think about this, this is exactly what an uncoupling chemical does. So an uncoupling chemical lets protons cross the membrane without getting anything back for it. And so this will actually, you can make a protein that does that as well, just by opening up a proton pore. The protons will flow naturally down and you'll dissipate the gradient that you have and you'll get heat as a result. Again, you don't want to do this under normal conditions, but there are some conditions under which you want to do this exact kind of uncoupling protein. And uh, for example, if you live in Siberia, you might gain some survival advantage by being able to generate your own heat under dire circumstances. And there is positive selection of this gene in the Siberian population. But the place where we know it works in everyone is when you are a newborn. You aren't good at regulating your body heat yet. You don't even have fat reserves yet. So what do you do? Newborns will survive better if they have this uncoupling protein expressed Especially, look where the newborn has it expressed. They have it sort of darkened over the heart and over the kidneys, if you see on the bottom. And it turns out that this kind of uh, uncoupling protein called thermogenin, it's a very good name, 
it's in a kind of adipose tissue, so it's expressed with the fuel that it needs, and it's called brown fat because they're so full of mitochondria that they actually turn brown. Um, you know, so that's how many uh, mitochondria they have. Thermogenin is one of these proton pores. The wasted energy turns into heat. The fat is brown because it's filled with mitochondria, and they're all working away, but they're working away to pump protons to turn the fat into a proton gradient, and the proton gradient, they just let it back in because it makes the heat where they need it. The heat is more important than the ATP to them. And so uh, hibernating animals will also use brown fat as a heat source. You can think about uh, the bears. And it's actually in 1% of the newborn's mass is brown fat. And in fact, you still retain some adult adipocytes that are brown fat. So the th one theory is if you are warm for a few weeks, you will actually develop more brown fat. You'll turn on this gene and you'll actually burn more calories just by keeping your, the external temperature. Um, oh, actually, I said warmer. I was reading it in Celsius. That's Fahrenheit. If you keep it cold, your body will want to generate more heat to keep your temperature up against the cold. And that will eventually develop more brown fat, which will literally burn fat for you. I don't know if it's true. It's just a theory. But that's all a mini lecture can say.